Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. This has been a horrendous year. Bernie Sanders uses Thanksgiving message to attack Republicans. Failed candidate Bernie Sanders put out a video for Thanksgiving. What started out as a warm message of gratitude for the holiday quickly turned into a mean-spirited attack against Republicans. I don't have to tell anybody that from a political point of view, this has been a horrendous year. It appears that almost every day, there is something coming at the White House that is embarrassing, that is destructive, that is horrific, said Sanders. And that's the bad news. But the good news is that because the American people from coast to coast have begun the process of standing up and fighting back we have won some very significant victories despite the fact that right-wing Republicans control the White House, the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate. Because of what you did, people all across the country, a Republican effort to throw 30 million Americans off of health insurance failed. We beat them back, said Sanders. And because of your effort. We're going to take them on on their disastrous tax proposal to get massive tax breaks to billionaires, while at the same time raising taxes the millions of people in the middle class, he said. We're going to beat them on that as well it is clear not just to me but do I think almost everybody of the American people are catching on as to what a disaster, what a political disaster Trump and the Republican leadership are about, he said. Can Bernie Sanders stop lying about Republicans and just relax for one day? He's not paying attention to me. Eminem furious at Trump for not acknowledging his rap. Eminem, once one of the most popular rappers in the world is slowly losing his popularity. In a desperate attempt to make headlines, Eminem rapped an angry freestyle against the president where he literally told his fans that are Trump supporters to go FK themselves. However, much to his dismay, the president never even commented on his little rap. I was and still am extremely angry. I can't stand that mother fker. I feel like he's not paying attention to me. I was kind of waiting for him to say something and for some reason, he didn't say anything, whined Eminem. As it turns out, Eminem is so washed up that the president doesn't care about his insults. And as Eminem just revealed, he doesn't care as much about Donald Trump as he does getting attention for himself. From his endorsement of Bannon, support for the Klansman, Tiki torches in hand for the soldier that's black and comes home from Iraq and is still told to go back to Africa, fork and a dagger, and this racist 94 year old grandpa, who keeps ignoring our past historical deplorable factors, wrapped him in M. And F. Ann Coulter with a clan poster. With a lamp post, door handle, shutter. A damn bolt cutter, a sandal, a can opener, a candle, rubber. Piano, a flannel, sucker, some hand soap, butter. A banjo and manhole cover, he wrapped. Any fan of mine who's a fan of his, I'm drawing in the sandal line, you either for or against. And if you can't decide who you like more in this split, on who you should stand beside, I'll do it for you with this, F you, he said. As it turns out none of those fans chose him. Black Liberation Group releases disgusting plan on how to turn Black Friday into hashtag Black Lives Matter Friday. And Seattle, Washington Black Liberation Organization called Black Freedom Front has decided to hijack Black Friday. Most likely because it has the world black in it and they are too stupid to understand that the day has nothing to do with African Americans. Racism, stops with me, Black Liberation starts with you. Do black lives and your life matter more than Black Friday deals? If it does, then join us and hit the street writes the group on a Facebook page that has over 10,000 people interested. It is 2017, 
racism is still alive and well and that's unacceptable white nationalist and white supremacist and racists are marching through streets and police are still acting on their racist intent and murdering people of color and getting away with it and it's unacceptable and businesses profit off of slavery from 200 years ago and still don't give reparations, they write in a horrendous run-on sentence. We need to show that racism, stops with me, you, and that racism will be defeated forever and that racism is not acceptable in this country or world and also, black liberation starts with you because until all black people are free then no one's is free, they write. Black liberation starts with you and we need everyone in the country and the world in the streets demanding black liberation but also saying that. Racism, it stops with me. Black, liberation starts with you, they wrote. Why can't they leave anything alone? Art of the Deal co-writer turns on President Trump with disgusting statement about black people. Tony Schwartz, co-writer of President Trump's famous book The Art of the Deal, has become a liberal puppet. But his recent attacks against the president went way over the line. He started by claiming that Trump is only attacking Lavar Ball because he is black. First of all, Ball's father is a tall black man and I think Trump is half awed and half frightened by black people, and his only way of dealing with them is to attack them, said Schwartz. So what does him attacking Trump say about him? President Trump attacks anyone who insults him, that is a strategy that helped him dominate all of his opponents. Including white men. And. On the other hand, I think he has a zero tolerance for any criticism of any kind, that's why he goes after anybody who says virtually anything about him that's negative, said Schwartz contradicting himself. Odd and afraid of black people that's a big statement right there, based on what? Asked the CNN host. Well, I mean, I watched him. He was odd, unequivocally odd during the many times I saw him with members of the team that he owned in the USFL and when he sponsored fights, prize fights. I think he had this kind of ambivalent relationship where he wished he could have been an athlete like they were, and on the other hand, if he felt fear, he always felt aggression. And aggression was in a need to put them down, said Schwartz. Sarah Silverman claims that if you hate the liberal media you actually hate Jews. Do you hate how CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times and more constantly lies about conservatives and calls them all racist sexists? Well according to comedian Sarah Silverman's new show I Love You America, if you dislike the liberal media then you actually just hate Jews. During an episode, former neo-Nazi turned peace advocate, Christian Pisciolini went on a rant against Trump. You know, people talk about dog whistles using code words to appeal to a certain base I hear a bullhorn, I hear it loud and clear. They are things I used to say 30 years ago but they're using slightly more palatable words, said Pisciolini. Instead of saying, you know, the Jew-owned media, now they call it the liberal media, and instead of calling it the global Jewish conspiracy, instead they call it globalism, said Pisciolini. Sarah Silverman nodded having no objection to what he was saying. There's a lot of problems with this. For starters, there are many non-Jews in the liberal media who infuriate conservatives. There are also many Jews in conservative media that conservatives love. Breitbart and The Daily Wire, for example are conservative outlets with a heavy percentage of Jewish reporters. All in all, if anyone is trying to cause hatred and division it is Sarah Silverman. People hate the liberal media because they are liars. There is nothing deeper to it than that. Hillary spends Thanksgiving explaining how Obama made her lose election to Trump. Hillary Clinton did not put any thank you messages on her Twitter during Thanksgiving. Instead all we have is her talking on the Hugh Hewitt radio show the night before. She spent the day before Thanksgiving doing what she does best. Which is blame someone for her election loss. In this case, it is Obama's fault. 
I was proud to serve in the Obama administration. I did not agree with everything that President Obama decided, but on balance, I really think he did what had to be done to rescue the economy, which as we all remember, was in desperate straits," said Hillary. He did chart a course in the world that favored diplomacy and negotiation, something that I think is important. But it is true that when you run to succeed a two-term president of your own party, you have a historical headwind blowing against you," she said. And I refer to that in the book, because it's not just this campaign can be set apart from everything that's ever happened in our politics. It is a challenge. If you are both a candidate defending a lot of the areas of agreement, but also putting forth an agenda for change, which is what I try to do, it is often difficult to get the second part of that message through," she said. So I do think it was a problem, said Hillary. She just can't let the loss go. I wonder if she ever will.